our entrance in as we prepare to celebrate. A reading from the second book of Samuel. Now, when the king lived in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his surrounding enemies, the king said to Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells in a tent. And Nathan said to the king, Go. Do all that is in your heart, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Would you build me a house to dwell in? Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep that you should be prince over my people, Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. 
and I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may dwell in their own place, and be disturbed no more. And violent men shall afflict them no more, as formerly, from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house when your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your fathers. I will raise up your offspring after you, who shall come from your body. And I will establish his kingdom. I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. The word of the Lord. Our response is, I will sing forever of your mercies, O Lord. to our father Abraham to grant us that we 
being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give knowledge of salvation to his people in the forgiveness of their sins, because of the tender mercy of our God, whereby the sunrise shall visit us from on high, to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be Lord Jesus Christ. If in our Gospel yesterday, my dear brothers and sisters, we heard the song of praise of Mary when she visited her cousin Elizabeth, what is commonly known as the Magnificat, a prayer that we pray every evening at Vespers when we read the Divine Office. Our Gospel today is what is called the Benedictus, the Canticle of Zechariah. Indeed, once again, a song of praise, Zechariah recalling the whole of salvation history, thanking God for this fulfillment of what was to become of his son John, namely one that would prepare the way for the coming of the Messiah. We have had a time of preparation, my dear brothers and sisters. We are in the fourth week of Advent. It's the last day of Advent before we move into Christmas Day. I do hope this has been a time of good preparation for us. I do hope we've made important decisions to turn away from our sinful ways and return back to God's love. I know a good number of us will have had our customary sacrament of reconciliation this year, but unfortunately, due to the circumstances that are prevailing, this was not possible. But yet, even if that did not happen, I do hope we've made amends and indeed restored broken relationships with God, with those around us, and with ourselves too. We have a few hours to go before Christmas. If we haven't done that as yet, all is not lost. Remember, a good pilot can avoid a crash landing. And we too, perhaps, can avoid that if we can make a 360 degree turn and return back to God's love. I pray that each one of us truly make the best of this last day in the season of Advent. And may the song of Zechariah be ours too. A song of giving praise and glory to God for all the goodness that He does in our lives. I will continue in prayer with me, you know. Forever and ever. Amen. 
the Lord and be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Let us to be right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so they may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which shall be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim giving thanks that you have us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Oswald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, and with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, your spouse, with the blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we be married to co to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you 
through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours. Forever and ever. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with you Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those born in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, am I not worthy that you should enter under my roof? But only say the word, and my soul shall be. An act of spiritual communion. O Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, I beg you to come spiritually into my soul to enrich me with your holy grace and make me truly your own forever. O Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in me in the spirit of your holiness, in the fullness of your power, in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O Divine Guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your Divine Will, and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Lord Jesus, thank you for the blessings and graces you have given me through this spiritual communion. Our communion him, O come, O come, Emmanuel.
Let us pray. Grant to us who find new vigor, O Lord, in these your wondrous gifts, that as we prepare to celebrate in adoration the festivities of your Son's nativity, so we may possess in gladness his everlasting rewards, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Prayer for Relief from the Corona Virus Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere, hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the Corona Virus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for a quick control of the outbreak, for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. We pray for the doctors doing research that an effective vaccine to combat the sickness is speedily found. We pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may the peace and blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever and ever. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. And I see God. Come and save us, O Lord. Come and save us, O Lord. 